my camera just died for like an hour. Yay! <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kelly and welcome to Kaylee Creates. Um, so today I am doing another marine biology video. So this look is inspired by um, the queen triggerfish. So I'm gonna have a picture right here. And um, so these queen triggerfish, I think are absolutely beautiful. I have dove with them in a couple different places and they're just really, really neat. So their scientific name is Ballistis vetula and they're mostly found in the Atlantic Ocean while most other triggerfish are found in the Pacific. This one is found in the Atlantic. They really like to live on coral reefs and rocky reefs because everything that they eat lives there. Um, they are very brightly colored, so they are more found in the tropical waters, but they can be found as far north as Canada. Their favorite food to eat are small crustaceans, and they absolutely, absolutely love to eat sea urchins. So they are very smart creatures, and they will actually flip the sea urchins and crabs onto their backs um, so that they can get to the softer areas that have less protection. So they are pretty smart creatures and they will kind of do whatever they need to do to get that food. They are extremely territorial and they do have a pretty strong bite. I mean, it's not gonna hurt a whole lot, but it will draw blood. They have teeth and they're very, very territorial of their areas. And they can also be known as quite aggressive. Um, I personally have been bitten by one in an aquarium. It does not feel good. It didn't, obviously didn't hurt me for the long run, but it doesn't feel good. They are territorial of their homes, but they're especially territorial of their nests. It is very common to be bitten by any sort of triggerfish. Uh, triggerfish are known for a trigger that is on top of their, almost like their head. Um, and it is a very pointy spine that can stick up whenever they feel like they are in danger. Um, so it makes them bigger so larger animals have more trouble eating them and also if they push themselves into rocks they can put up that trigger and it kind of locks them into that rock so they're hard to be pulled out of. Queen triggers are uh, near threatened so they're not quite in the threatened range but they're not exactly of least concern so they're not exactly completely okay either. Um, but this is mostly due to the pet trade so um, they're really popular to put in uh, fish tanks and aquariums and things like that, but they get relatively large. The biggest one that you're going to be able to find is about two feet, so that's pretty big, um, but usually they are about half the size of that. But that's still a one foot fish that is probably not going to be fit, fitting in a fish tank that you might have at home. So they are aggressive fish. They may be beautiful, but they um, really are not very good to be kept in an aquarium just because they get way too big. Um, they are eaten. Um, I have had triggerfish before, not specifically queen triggerfish, but I have had them before. They are pretty tasty, but I personally love queen triggerfish. I think they're absolutely beautiful, and I just think that other people should know about them. So if you guys want to see how I got this look and how it looks a little bit like a queen trigger, uh, just follow along. Okay, and then to begin, as always, I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows. So this is the Milani, the Stay Put Brow Color, and this is in the shade Soft Brown 01. Um, this is the lightest one that they had. Um, and it's not super warm like a lot of the blonde shades, but I like it. <laughs> I struggled today with my eyebrows. Um, do you guys ever do that where you go through like a couple days that you do everything like great and then you go through a couple weeks where you can't do it? Yeah, I have not been able to do my eyebrows for the past like month and I have no idea why. I just, I just can't get them to look the way that they want. Like, right now they're super uneven and I just can't do it. I just can't do it. It's fine. Um, but I'm just going to move on to my eyes um, and I'm going to be priming with my Morphe Eyelid Primer and I'm just going to be using my fingers for this. And I've learned with this stuff, don't put a lot on because a little goes a long way. And if you put too much on, it actually starts to get crusty around the edges. So do not put too much. And I think that's with a lot of eye primers, but 
this one does it too. And then I'm gonna be using like, I mean not a lot of palettes, but I'm gonna be using a couple palettes today. Uh, but I'm gonna start out with my Morphe 35B palette. Um, I know you can't buy it anymore, but you can get a lot of the same colors in a lot of different palettes. Um, and I'm gonna start out with this white shade right here, um, just to set all of that primer into place and then really just block out any pigment that I might have in my eyes. Next I'm going to be start putting just a little bit of color into my crease um, and I'm going to be using this Butter London palette. This is from BoxyCharm Natural Goddess palette um, and I'm going to be using uh, the shade over here. It's a nice light blue. This is the Femme Fatale. And then they have this like purplish blue color. This shade up here is just like a purplish bluish color and I feel like that's the color I'm looking for. And I'm just going to be blending this into my crease as well. And I'm actually going to bring it up into a point above my eyebrow. And this shape can be really awkward because I'm actually going to be cutting it out in the end um, to get it the correct shape that I'm looking for, but this is just more to bring some color up. Okay, so then now that I have a little bit more of a shape, sort of, uh, I'm going to start adding some of that black. So I'm going to be using this color, and this is just a little tiny brush. This is called the Mini Flat Angled Brush, and basically it's just me trying to be as precise as possible because I'm very nervous to do this part. And I'm just really packing on that black to try and get it as pigmented as possible. I look like a clown. Next I'm going to be going in with yellow that shade right there. And this is just a flat eyeshadow brush. I'm going to be packing that onto my lid. And then I'm gonna just blend that a little bit. Now I'm going to be just cutting along the outside to make it a little bit more sharp. This is, I'm just using some micellar water on a Q-tip. So I want it to be really sharp and precise right there. And then I'm gonna be doing just a little bit of like graphic liner in the crease. And I'm gonna be using this shade right here. And I'm gonna be doing it by wetting my brush and dipping it into the eyeshadow. And this is just a little um, It Cosmetics brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna be using the same technique back at that same like purplish blue shade right there. Um, I'm going to be sharpening up. Okay, so I feel like it's starting to come together somewhat. Um, I feel like it looks more like a butterfly, but it's fine. Um, I'm just going to be going in with my CoverGirl um, liquid eyeliner and I'm just going to be barely lining that bottom part. Okay, and then before I get too crazy on my eyes, I still do want to do my face makeup. Um, and then to begin, I'm going to be using my CoverFX uh, blurring primer. And I'm just using my CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is in the shade Buff Beige. Um, and then I'm gonna be going in with concealer. This is my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Light 14. I know I finally got a shade that is not completely white. Look at me go. and then I'm going to set my foundation using my RCMA powder, which my bottle is over in my bathroom. 
that I have it tapped out into a little container over here. And now I'm gonna go back in to work on my eyes. Under my eyes, I'm gonna be using that same uh, like medium blue shade, like the bluish purple one. Um, and this is just on a smaller brush, just from the Vintage Cosmetics. I'm using that same purplish blue shade. I'm gonna run it under my eyes. And then I am gonna be going in with that liner brush again. So I'm gonna wet that and wing it out the opposite direction of what I already have. And then I'm gonna be using this to create another point under my eye. I'm gonna fill it in with that wet one. And then I'm gonna be going back in with my uh, liquid eyeliner. Ah! <laughs> but it's finally coming together. I feel like you can finally see that it's a fish, kind of. Um, I am not gonna be putting mascara on just because I feel like that's actually gonna like take away from this makeup look. But now I'm gonna bronze up my face a little bit and I'm gonna be going in with my, duh, my Benefit um, Hoola bronzer. This is just a, sh a big crown brush. And then for highlighter, I'm gonna be going into my Anastasia Beverly Hills Aurora palette. I'm gonna use Orion here, the blue one. I'm gonna be using a Luxie tapered highlighter brush. And then for my lips, because I already have something crazy going on, why don't I go crazy with my lips too? I'm just going to be going in with the uh, NYX Liquid Lip Suede Cream Lipstick, and this is in the shade Little Denim Dress. All right, and now I'm gonna finish with some setting spray. Alright, so this is the final look. It's another marine biology look. Yeah, um, I think that is it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope that you guys really liked my marine biology videos. You can see that he's getting a little flustered waiting for me. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this today. I really hope you learned something. And I hope that I see you guys again next time. Bye.